Okay, uh, here is a the same document from my last video, but uh, I updated it with several other things. Um, most importantly, the the individual signals in the uh, data path. Um, in the original document, it just has one straight line going down here, up and down, and it doesn't really show <clears throat> too much where what signals going where, because it's not like the data path is one signal. Uh, series of, of, of paths, uh, one series of traces or whatever going from one chip to the other and all the chips have access to it. For example, uh, as you know, the chip memory is useful, very useful because all of the chips, quote unquote, all the chips have access to it. And that is indicative of the um, purple here that says DRD. That is the chip, uh, that's the memory that is accessible to all the chips with with two notable exceptions the processor and the ROM uh, the ROM isn't really needed um, because uh, this is uh, involving the memory and other chips writing and reading from this this uh, DRD path but um, but that that's the one that that uh, whereas if you if you brought in external RAM uh, for the system um, you know, they wouldn't have direct contact with that. They'd be on this uh, A or D. I believe it's on the D. Um, so anyway, um, and you know, everything breaks out on the expansion connector at the bottom as well. And I have here the, set, the RGB signal. I made it really pretty with colors and stuff like that so that uh, it would be really easy to read. And we have the audio signal. Um, now the audio signal comes out of Paula and then it goes over to the composite encoder and there was an error on the original uh, block diagram that showed that the audio is also going into the RF modulator. It's not going directly in there. It's going through the composite encoder and then from there it's going into the RF modulator. Not that it really makes that much of a difference, but you know, it was an error so I fixed it as long as I was there. So I colored all the audio stuff brown. Um, and, and, you know, so uh, one other thing about the chip mem, because my videos seem to be about chip mem all the time, uh, this is the address path right here, DRA, the green one. So um, Alice is uh, addressing the RAM. There are a couple of just two address lines coming from DRA going over to Akiko, but really most of them are, are directly from the RAM to Alice. And this is how Alice is addressing. Um, uh, the RAM. It's addressing the RAM here, uh, but when the data is flowing, it's going on this purple one, DRD. See? So anyway, this is available on my website, uh, retrofriends.com. Um, and, uh, you know, or you can just make a screenshot of this and keep it or whatever, but it, th this will help you if you're trying to figure out, uh, trying to diagnose signal problems on a CD32. All right, so in my last video, I repaired this uh, Amiga CD32 motherboard. Um, and we discovered that we also have a problem with the CD-ROM drive. N no, I'm not sure if it's uh, going to have multiple problems, but there obviously is a problem with the uh, controller board, the, the CD-ROM board that's mounted um, on the CD-ROM assembly. It's located under here. But anyway, so... Uh, now there's a schematic for this, but for that board there's not a schematic. So, uh, great, that's just swell, because now what do I do? Um, I, I heavily depend on schematics to fix things. Uh, that's what they're there for. Nobody has a schematic for their Avast all around. Um, however, so failing that, uh, the next best thing would be to have a second circuit board. So, uh, I have another case that includes the uh, the drive assembly and circuit board um, on the way uh, but it's not here yet um, I've received one thing in the mail and so that's why I'm doing this video as part two instead of doing the CD-ROM as part two I've received my diagram chip um, let's put the chip in the board and uh, continue the video hold on 
Okay, in my uh, search for ways to diagnose the Amiga CD32, and because even though I have fixed this CD32 motherboard, I still had this on the way and it arrived after I repaired this board, uh, I still had the desire to connect my PC or some other serial device, usually my PC, up to this to read uh, the output of diagram from the serial port. Now the trick is is that this uh, CD32 has no serial ports on it. Uh, sort of. It does actually have a, an actual serial port in the form of the keyboard connector on the side. So that keyboard connector has a serial port that's coming from the Akiko chip. And the Akiko chip only puts out TTL serial, not RS-232 serial. I'll explain that further in a moment. Uh, there's also a serial port on the uh, edge connector. So if you plug in an expansion, the SX-1 or XX-32 or whatever, it, they both come with a serial port. Um, and that's coming from Lisa. So really what's, and it's also a TTL signal. So what, really what we're talking about is this motherboard has two serial port inputs, uh, in and outputs, um, you know, connections, uh, transmit and receive. And, uh, you know, they're, because they're located on two different chips, they're somewhat independent of each other. Now, um, what I have, so I can't connect either this connector here, uh, the aux port, keyboard port, or the edge connector. I can't couple those straight to an RS-232 signal. If I do that, I'll blow chips because RS-232 has a range of values that, that, that are in the 12 volt range and TTL serial is only in the 5 volt range. So if you attempt to hook up a regular serial port to a TTL device, it will blow whatever chip's coming from it. So, you know, I'd blow the Akiko or I'd blow the Lisa. Perhaps any um, components in between as well. I think there's a resistor and possibly a diode here. Uh, anyway, so um, what do you do? I mean, if uh, those peripherals, uh, if you get an SX1 or an SX32, um, it, it, they have CIA chips in them and they actually change the CIA. That's the job of the, one of the jobs of the CIA in the uh, other machines, other Amiga machines is to, is to change TTL sig, uh, serial to RS-232 serial. Uh, but this machine has not, none of that. So when you put the expansion on, the expansion actually has the CIA chips in them and then you're able to get parallel and serial ports out of it. Um, so, but those are rare add-ons for this, uh, this, co this console, this computer. Um, and, you know, for me to get one of those is going to, you know, I could probably borrow one from somebody, but, you know, it would be much easier if I could just use the TTL signal as is. Well, you know what? You can. You can use the TTL signal. You can read and write to a TTL serial signal. And that's by using one of these. Needs more light on there. That is a USB to TTL serial adapter. Um, normally it's used to program uh, breakout boards. Uh, one of the things, <clears throat> the reason I have this is because I uh, reflash Gotex with flash floppy firmware, and that's the reason why I have this, is because I use this to flash. Uh, I use it to communicate with the TTL serial signal on the GoTech. So I already had one of those and so it's quite simple. Um, the one thing you need to remember is that this unit has a 5 volt um, pin and a ground pin and especially the 5 volt pin you do not want to connect that to your Amiga. Um, you don't need power or ground uh, from the serial uh, adapter, the USB to TTL serial adapter. Um, all you need is the transmit and receive. So 
because it's pretty convenient for me to grab the signal uh, out of the keyboard aux port, that's what I've done. So I looked at the schematic, I found out what pins it is. It might be, it's either backwards or from the view of the actual plug instead of the socket. But from what I'm looking at, they may have swapped the RX and the TX because the bottom one is coming up as the TX, but on the diagram it shows the top one as the TX. I do know, I haven't made the mistake and I already know this, you connect RX from one device to TX of another and TX from one device to the R, you swap them so that they're, because the, the information is going this way on, let's say that we're going from the Amiga to the computer, the TX is sending the information this way and the RX is coming from the computer back in here. So the TX, that you're transmitting information here, needs to go to the receiving RX information here. So here we have it hooked up, and we have the diagram plugged in. Here's the schematic. And the TX shows it being next to that little key button that's in the connector, but that's not where it's coming up. Um, for me, it's coming up over here. So I think I might edit this document. I think that this is supposed to be TX and this is supposed to be RX. This is the signal that's that's coming back from the PC or whatever. So anyway, so that's that. And let's bring forward our screen capture. And here is our diagram. You can see that I've done this already before I showed you, but Let's uh, turn it on, and we have to hit a key. So I'm going to hit a key on my PC keyboard a couple times. I'm not sure where it is. I think maybe when the thing goes across, um, right here. Yeah, there we go. All right. So uh, if I don't hit a key, this once the di initial boot up is done and the menu comes up, this just dies. There's nothing left on it. So you have to hit a key to get the serial output active. But I'm typing on my PC keyboard right now and it is <clears throat> i'm able to go through the me the, me the menu and, and do the test so if we have bad video for example on our cd32 got no video at all um, we can boot uh, and verify that the memory and everything else is working and we're just dealing with a video problem um, that would be probably one of the most useful tests you can do with Let's go to System Info, see what it says. Information on this machine. It's not the most information you could get from it, but you know, I don't usually use that one. Um, anyway, so memory. Let's do a chip mem test. Okay, well, anyway, so huge, huge deal. Um, without a conventional, or I should say legacy, serial port, you know, nine pin or 25 pin, 25 pin uh, connector for hooking straight with a null modem to another computer or whatever, uh, you could just, you know, kind of bodge something together uh, and get you some, and just get one of those, the TTL adapters aren't that expensive, I forget how much they are, and I mean it was, it was less than 20 bucks, I'm pretty sure. I'll put a link in the description to it, the, the same one that I bought, but, uh, well apparently this doesn't work. Part of the screen is not there, I wonder. It's just kind of come making it compact. Anyway, so this is the video output of the CD32. This is PuTTY, which is the serial 
output of the CD32. So I'm just very happy about that. Now I can use the same tool, a very useful tool, Diagram, to, di to diagnose problems on CD32s the same way I do on other machines.